you probably clicked on this video to see what the pattern was in the thumbnail. You will be able to work out where these numbers come from quite early on, but to truly understand why they emerge, you would have to keep watching for the whole video. This is an interesting number theory slash algebra problem taken from the second round of the British Mathematics Olympiad from 2011. The problem states that the function f is defined on the positive integers as follows f of 1 equals 1, f of 2n equals f of n when n is even, f of 2n equals 2 dots of f of n when n is odd, f of 2n plus 1 equals 2 f of n plus 1 when n is even, f of 2n plus 1 equals f of n when n is odd. Find the number of positive integers n which are less than 2011 and have the property that f of n equals f of 2011. Now, as with any video of this sort, I'd recommend spending at least half an hour trying the problem yourself. And if you need them, here are some hints if you get stuck doing the problem. First, make sure you take a good amount to test small values in the function. Secondly, don't get too fixated on the algebra or looking for some closed form for f specifically, but instead look more at the properties of the numbers being inputted and outputted by the function. Thirdly, the problem does seem quite related to multiples or powers of 2. How might this help? Now, let's go on to see how we might motivate and find a solution to the problem. If you start listing out small values of the function, there doesn't seem to be any immediate patterns. But just going aside from the question, imagine I give you the number n and the number 10n plus 3. If you write out 10n plus 3, it just looks like the number n, but all the digits are shifted one place to the left, and the 3 is placed to the right of the number. In the problem, we're not dealing with 10s, but instead 2s, so it makes sense to consider binary, or in other words, base 2. Now, let's look at each of the four properties given in the question individually. First note that a number in binary is even if it ends in a zero and is odd if it ends in a one. Also, doubling a number is the same as appending a zero to the right of the number in binary and doubling a number and adding one is the same as appending a one to the right of the number. Therefore, the first property that f of 2n equals f of n if n is even says that if n ends in a zero in binary, then appending another zero to the right of n, in other words, going from n to n, does nothing to the value of the function. The second property that f of 2n equals 2 times by f of n, if n is odd, says that if n ends in a 1, then appending a zero to the right of n means we also append a zero to the right of the function's output. The property that f of 2n plus 1 equals 2 times by f of n plus 1 if n is even is that if n ends in a 0 and appending a 1 to the right of n, in other words going from n to n plus 1, means that we also append a 1 to the right of the function's output. Finally, the property that f of 2n plus 1 equals f of n if n is odd is that if n ends in a 1 and appending a 1 to the right of n, there's nothing to the value of the function. Now, that's a lot of information to take in, but let's take a minute and summarize what these four shifts in perspective actually mean. We're saying that when we duplicate the last digits for n in binary and append this to itself, then the value of the function stays the same. However, when we append the opposite digit to the last digit of n, then we append that same digit to the value of the function. If we apply this process recursively, what happens is that consecutive strings of repeated digits will get crushed together into one digit. And in particular, since f of 1, which we can treat as a base case, is itself equal to 1, and the crushed form of 1 is also 1, we can say inductively that f of n outputs the binary crushed version of n, or in other words, 
the function treats every single string of consecutive digits as a single digit and outputs this new number. The final step is to enumerate the value of f of 2011. Conveniently, the animations I've been showing you have all been of the number 2011 in binary. You can check this for yourself. Therefore, we can say that f of 2011 is 10101 in binary. Therefore, the problem is now asking us which values of n, once crushed, will also output 10101. And this is in fact a combinatorics problem now. Given some output from the function and going in reverse, we know that we must have had five strings of repeated digits. The question says that n is less than 2012, so n has at most 11 digits in binary. Now, if you haven't found the answer yet, take a moment to pause the video and try and find the final answer. Done? Well, at first, you might think that there are 11 choose 5 possibilities for m, because there are 11 positions where we can place digits, and we choose 5 of them to represent the start of each string of consecutive digits. However, we have slightly overcounted because there are numbers between 2011 and 2047 which have 11 digits, because 2 to the power of 11 is 2048. Unfortunately, the best way to remove these overcounted numbers is a manual search, although it is a fairly quick task to do. In the end, there are 7 extra numbers which we've overcounted, which I've shown on the screen. This gives us a final answer of 11 choose 5 minus 7, which is 455. What makes this problem so beautiful is that a naive look at the question would suggest it's an algebra problem. However, the change of base from base 10 to base 2 shows there's much more number theory involved in this question. And the problem is closed off by a bit of combinatorics. Furthermore, a neatly written up final solution would be extremely short despite the difficulty there is in finding such a solution. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this useful.